Hi, I'm Lori Campbell, welcoming you to another great episode of Education, A Higher Calling, where we delve into the lives of scholars, professors, students, working professionals, and even those who want to get a higher education but don't know how. By committing to finishing their degrees and focusing on their goals, these individuals excelled in their fields. But more than being successful in their careers, these people understood something even more significant, the importance of higher education in fulfilling their divine calling in life. So one key characteristic about honesty is described in this, or captured in this Greek word, dikaiosune. It's the ability to both know and do the right thing. Sometimes it's translated virtue in Greek. That's really important in education because you have to be able to know what the right thing to do is, right? You have to have that knowledge. And then you have to have the character and the courage to be able to follow through with doing the character to do that which is good, the courage to do that. So dikaiosune in, in a Christian education is incredibly important because we're developing knowledge in the classroom. It's important to know the things that are, that are in chemistry and business and, and politics. Uh, what are the attributes, the facts that we need to know? We're, we're developing that in our minds uh, in the classroom. But then we've got this other piece that we've got to develop in our, in our character, which is the ability to do the right thing. Once I know what I should do, then I can have the character to do the right thing. Those two things do go together. They're really inseparable in a Christian education that you're not going to get other places. Romans 12, 2 says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What patterns are maybe in your world that you've never even questioned? Maybe there's a way that you've been going and a path that you've been on that you know isn't the right way. Maybe there's something that's been holding you back. Maybe it's fear, maybe it's insecurity. Your mind is transformed. And we have a God that brings new things to us all the time. Your world can be different than it is right now. There are things that God has planned for you in the future that can change everything. And he is starting right now by the transforming of your mind. Let it happen and see what's out there for you. God has in store for you things that you can hardly imagine. Be transformed by that and let the world go away and let God speak into your life. My name is Jeff Culp and I work at Trinity Classical Academy. This is my ninth year and uh, it's been an exciting journey. I started off as the school's first fifth grade teacher uh, when we added fifth grade as we were marching up adding one grade at a time. Uh, so for two years I was a full-time fifth grade teacher and I think my title was Dean of Administration back then, just having a leadership role in our 100 student or so school nine years ago. Then for one year I taught fifth grade math only and became grammar school principal. Uh, so like I said, this is my ninth year, so I've been grammar school principal for a number of years now. The school has grown so rapidly. My role has grown rapidly into a lot of different areas in addition to overseeing the grammar school. I, uh, I grew up in Pennsylvania, uh, which is where I, I lived until I uh, finished my undergrad uh, work at uh, a school called Kutztown University of Pennsylvania, a real small school, and wanted to uh, live in a different area, live in a different climate really, so three friends and I packed it up and went west and uh, ended up in Santa Clarita, California, which is where Master's College is. A friend of mine was going to Master's College, so he was pretty much my ticket to uh, California. Uh, so I had already received my uh, undergrad degree in business, so I thought I was going to pursue a career in business, but after a couple of years of a uh, couple of jobs, uh, I decided to pursue education. Uh, my dad was uh, an educator of 32 years in the same classroom. So it's, an, uh, it's amazing to, for him to have done that. No one teaches 32 years in the same classroom. So I saw what the uh, education career looked like and knew it was a good career, thought I had some gifting in that area. So uh, after, like I said, I was living in California for a few years, decided to go back to school and get my teaching credential because uh, again, I. I felt like God had gifted me 
uh, in that area. So I enjoyed the credential program and uh, did student teaching, which is a, a good component of uh, the, uh, you know, getting your credential. Pursued a job, got a job in public school. I taught fourth grade for two years and then taught third grade for six years at a local public school here in Santa Clarita, California. I uh, was friends with Liz Caddo, the head of Trinity, the founder of Trinity. You know, saw this school start in 2001. We decided to enroll our son in second grade at the time at Trinity. Then uh, late in that, his second grade year, uh, the gentleman who was in that role uh, decided to move on. So Liz approached me and said, would you like to be the school's fifth grade teacher and uh, administrator? So I took on that role and that was nine, nine years ago, which is uh, crazy to think about that it's been that long. But just, uh, it's been a great journey. We're just instruments in watching what God's doing here. I'm Cynthia Toms. I'm Director of Global Education at Westmont College. And I would not be where I am today without my education. For the person who wants to go into accounting, there's lots of great job opportunities. The important thing is ask yourself, what type of an accountant would you like to be? Public accounting, it's very intense work. Um, there can be a lot of travel involved, um, lots of long hours. Um, you need great communication skills to be in that. You're going to be talking to a lot of executives, asking them important questions, sometimes sensitive questions. Uh, so very important area, uh, but you've got to be really committed uh, to go into that. Um, also true uh, in the other two areas, but that work hours are a little bit more normal, more of that 40-ish kind of an hour, both in the private accounting and also in governmental accounting. Um, also probably not quite as much uh, interpersonal skills necessary for, um, for the private accounting. More of a technician, a person who enjoys more time working alone um, with, uh, with their spreadsheets or, or just putting together um, data to, to give advice to folks. So that would be my recommendations. Ask yourself, what do you want to do with your life? So, you're not into technology or teaching? but you are more into helping others as they grow older, now is the best time for you to join the ever-growing workforce for future therapists. According to US News, the next generation of retirees will be needing help. So of the top 20 most demanding jobs in the future, therapy held three of these categories. My name is Abel Morgan and I uh, grew up in South LA. Um, so otherwise known as South Central, Los Angeles, um, not too far from here where I work. And um, I am the second child of two. Um, I have an older sister, she's about 15 years older than me. My mom and dad raised me together um, in a happy home. I'm a PK, pastor's kid, so I uh, grew up with everything Christian, you know. I went to a Christian elementary, went to a uh, Christian middle school, um, went to a Catholic high school, even though it wasn't Christian, but you know, it was close. Education was really important, um, extremely important, because uh, my father was educated at the college level. He went to seminary. He didn't finish, but he did have some college education. My mom, on the other hand, she, she only had an eighth grade education. She's from Louisiana, and they had moved here in the 50s. Growing up was pretty tough, even still, you know, because I live in a, not a horrible neighborhood, but there was surrounding gangs and a lot of violence in the neighborhoods surrounding. Um, a lot of things to get into if I wanted to, a lot of influences, you know, but I had a pretty solid foundation and I had a, I had a lot of my friends, all my friends came from Christian homes too. So we really grew up together, it kept us, it kept us, I guess, centered because we were all uh, together for so long. So I didn't really have to wrestle for different, you know, groups to be a part of because I already knew everybody from the jump. So I think that played a major role. Staying together, having similar Christian backgrounds and being able to support each other through hard times throughout up until high school. I went to uh, Junipero Serra High School. High school was a, a challenging situation, you know, you know, more temptations, I guess. 
more people involved. You know, we are used to being in a small school environment. This was small by, you know, public high school standards, but bigger for us because we hadn't had so many kids in one place at a time. I mean, we had a community and the community was centered around uh, Christian values and Christian teachings. And uh, so it impacted us all. We all, to this day, we all read, read the scriptures. We all pray together. We all um, have that same reference point and we encourage each other in the faith. I could have been a better student, I say that. I mean, academically, I wasn't a strong student. I mean, I passed, <laughs> you know, I did pretty well, you know, considering the fact that I had many distractions. Uh, I think I had about a 3.0 or 3.0. I'm pretty sure I could have done way better, but I just didn't care as much. Well, um, my cousin and I actually, we went on some trips, you know, uh, the master's college. Um, recruiting, it, recruiting us like for basketball and trying to get us to, out there to at least see the campus and, and see my cousin was working there at the time and he was a recruiter so he brought us out we met some basketball players um, so that kind of helped us to think about college but I think we were already thinking about it anyway because our parents wanted us to be in college they wanted us to go to college they had prepped us for college they felt like they put us in the right schools um, so we, we were already going in that direction. So the bug was already planted early on. And I think that once we hit high school, it was just like, now we have to do it. Where are we gonna go? I'm Brian Clay, 2008 Olympic gold medalist in the decathlon. And I can honestly say that if it wasn't for college, I would not be who I am today. Has God called you to go to school, but you're just waiting for the right time? Well, my challenge to you today is the time is now. If we take an honest look and ask ourselves, we can always come up with an excuse for why we're waiting. I can't go to school now. I have to wait until the kids are grown. I have to wait until I'm settled in. I have to wait till I have a better position at work. I have to wait till I can afford it. All those are just excuses that keep us from God's amazing plan for our lives. Sometimes we feel like we're drowning in circumstances so hard that we can't even breathe, much less take on something new. And if that's you, I want you to know, those circumstances can be anything, but they can be nothing with God in the mix. If you believe Him and you trust Him and you just take that step, you're gonna have circumstances no matter what. I think about Moses' mom, Jochebed, like her circumstances could not have been any worse when she had a baby at a time where all the baby boys were ordered to be killed. She didn't let that happen to her son. And then when he got older, she prepared, the Bible says, she prepared a papyrus basket for him. And you know, it's the same Hebrew word as the word used for ark, Noah's ark. She put that baby in a basket in the Nile River Talk about circumstances. She put that baby in a basket in the Nile River that is a high current crocodile infested river and hoped for the best. And you know what? God's best did happen for her. Those circumstances were incredible. And the other ark circumstances were incredible because the entire planet was falling apart and Noah and his family were saved in the ark. Moses was saved in the ark in terrible circumstances. When we have bad circumstances, that's the time we need most to believe that God is sovereign and He reigns and He rules and His rule is over everything, including our circumstances. It will get better and I challenge you to believe if God is calling you to go to school, then your school, your college is your ark. Step into that ark and watch God completely surround you protect you, save you, and set you on His plan towards your higher calling. By far the favorite part of my job is the students. It's, uh, it sounds so cliche -ish, but I love coming to work each day. It's just awesome that I get to spend time with, with kids with students. When a kid is learning to read, when a student is understanding a new math concept, when a student is seeing what God is doing for the first time, that's, that's, why, I, that's why I do what I do. And I cannot imagine doing anything else 
I'm exactly where God wants me to be. I, I don't have any doubt about that. Uh, so, you know, being in education is exactly what God planned for me, and I think being at Trinity is exactly what God planned for me. So, my favorite part is definitely seeing the students, uh, even when there's a difficult situation, because you know that even if a student is having a conflict with another student, they're learning how to have conflict as adults, which you know they're going to have. So whether it's a, it's a hard conversation, whether it's a discipline situation, or it's celebrating a victory with them, it's all so worthwhile and it's so helping them know who God is and, and helping them know how God created them. He created each student differently and he created them each individually and for a purpose. So being in education is just helping them learn who they are. And we get to watch that in the formative years of their schooling, K through 12. So my favorite part of this is, is on some level everything that I get to do each day. I'm Dr. David Metcalf, and I would not be where I am today without my education. Welcome to the Q&A segment of the show, where I test your smarts in education. Here's your question. True or false, three in five households have student loan debt. Stay tuned for the answer. All right, guys, today at Education and Higher Calling, we're going to be hitting the street, talking to some individuals and see what education means to them. So let's go. I'm Efrain Talamantes. I'm an internal medicine physician here at UCLA. The best decision I ever made was to commit to getting a college education despite the obstacles of how expensive it was because I had a dream of coming back and serving as a physician. And in order to become a physician, you need to go to college. Um, there's so many things to learn um, and so much time that you have to dedicate that it's worth taking out all that money and making that investment. Welcome back to the Q&A section. Your question was true or false. Three in five households have student loan debt. The answer, false. Although it would seem that high, it isn't. Actually, it's only one in five households. So that's when I had made my decision that I wanted to go into education as a teacher. Okay, so that's when I decided to think about what could I do to get back into um, education, you know, and how could I go get back to school. So the Master's co College ironically had another program, it's called the, it's like an accelerated program for people who were in school or who were working, they could go to school at night. It's called the Center for Professional Development, Professional Studies. And so I uh, applied. Um, gave my story, you know, about how I was here before and now I'm back again and this time for real, you know, so uh, they accepted me again. I was in the program. Um, it took me about three years to finish. So this is gap between me being eight, 19, 20 to me. I think I graduated. I went back at 23, graduated at 26. So that's how I got my bachelor's degree. Um, I learned a lot. It was an excellent experience. I felt like this time I was there to truly learn, and it was just an eye-opening. Um, strengthen, it strengthened my faith, it strengthened my ac academics. And so when I was done, I'm like, okay, I gotta get my credential now. So I found a program online, uh, it was US, at USC. I decided to apply. Once I applied, um, USC accepted me. I thought, I think my personal letter was, was able to persuade them to, to accept me into the program. It was the same curriculum as, you know, if you were going to the brick and mortar school. Uh, so it was, it was good, you know, I, it was very pressing. Like, this is the first time I, I felt like I was academically challenged to the extreme. It was a master's program slash credentials. So I finished, got my degree, walked the stage, and so up to that point, my college career was pretty much done. You know, I wasn't expecting to go back to get a PhD or, or a EDD for education. I just decided I'm gonna get back and just go ahead and start working. So I transitioned from um, Inglewood Middle Charter Academy to 
the school that I'm at now, which is called Teach Academy of Technologies. Um, and this is also a middle school. Um, it's just, I teach seventh and eighth grade as a history teacher again. Who is you you're missing out of the one, and which one is uh, probably did the better? You guys just compare and contrast. I'm not going to tell you who wrote them. I'll tell you afterwards who wrote them. Have you ever been forced to uh, do something against your will and was never able to get that time back? This was the life of the blacks in the South, but not all were slaves like the blacks in the North. These blacks were free because cotton wasn't as profitable as it was in the South. After this, emancipation said uh, that the blacks were free. I think what brought me here is that I had a desire to be in the inner city, working with the, the kids who were in the same environment that I had grown up in, and try to make a difference, you know. Try to persuade them that there's a different way. Education is an important part of your life. Learning is a big part of your history. And even though it may not be talked about a lot, we're gonna talk about it a lot here so that you can understand that it's not just for others, it's for you as well. Oh yeah, I love what I do. I love what I do. I love the kids, I love this particular administration um, and how they help guide us and not necessarily micromanage us. Ebo is an amazing teacher. He actually started with us three years ago. He was a PE sub and at that time he was completing his master's at USC. Um, and then later on, he reapplied after working for another charter school for a year where he was unhappy with some leadership changes that happened and came on. And immediately when he came on, he just came with such a, a wealth of ideas. He started mock trial for our students, which was amazing. They had never participated in that before, which along with pushing writing and reading and listening standards was just a great opportunity for our students to participate in something they had never done before. Um, he started Scholar Council. He coordinated a talent show, so I would say on top of being an amazing educator, which he absolutely is, which I'm sure that you saw in the classroom, he pushes his students with rigor and higher learning and he really looks to close that achievement gap every day in the classroom. He connects with students and he really wants them to experience things they would not normally experience. They help guide us and they're really for the teachers, very supportive, and so it helps when you have that environment and you can focus in on the kids. And, and really supporting them academically. I am Dr. Heinze, and I would not be here today if it wasn't for education. For anyone interested in, in serving, doing min ministry, doing missions, education in any form is so important. There's so much that you gain. If you live on campus, you're living in community, you learn how to work and live with people. So, so key. Uh, classes and foundations, critical thinking, um, study habits, disciplines, so huge in any kind of level of education. And so in order, before you even launch into the world, it's so, it's so key. Uh, to be grounded, to know who you are, to have a chance outside of your four walls, outside of your home, to explore who, who are you in this world. And then you're going to be able to really, really reach people uh, for your cause, for your ministry, for Jesus. I suppose from time to time, everybody uh, who's a Christian gets asked the question, uh, what's your favorite book of the Bible? Um, and the one that I, I really most often cite as my favorite is the Old Testament, the prophet Isaiah. Um, I think those chapters that, that he wrote under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit are just incredibly powerful. Um, and there's a, there's a passage uh, over in chapter 61, um, and in a few verses down, it talks about what I call the spirit of exchange. And I think it's such a powerful statement for people because it, it talks about Christ coming to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, and then this, this phrase, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. There's a spirit of, of exchange there, where you exchange ashes for beauty, and mourning for the oil of joy, and a garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. We live in a culture and in a time where there's a spirit of heaviness, and Isaiah speaks to us and basically says that there is a spirit of exchange and when the Holy Spirit came in the form of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ in the form of the Holy Spirit speaks to our hearts, there is an exchange that takes place and it's a powerful exchange. People have asked me, Woody, not only what's your favorite 
chapter, but what's your favorite verse? It more specifically relates to you. It's also from Isaiah. It talks about the submissive servant. And this is what it says. And this is my passage for my life at this particular time. And this is what it says. The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned that I might speak a word in season to those who are weary. We've heard some really inspiring stories of how people change their lives through education. By committing to finishing their degrees and focusing on their goals, these individuals excelled in their fields. But more than being successful in their careers, these people understood something even more significant, the importance of higher education in fulfilling their divine calling in life. That's something that has an eternal impact. I hope you enjoyed another look at how education truly is a higher calling. Hello, my name is Abo Morgan, and I am Social Studies Instructor here at Teach Academy of Technologies. I want to thank you for supporting TVN and for watching Education, A Higher Calling. Is education for you? Well, if you're like me and so many other people I know, going to a college like this seems almost unattainable. But I'm here to tell you that's not the case. Thanks to the people at Ministry.com, there are hundreds of opportunities that can help to make your dreams for a better life come true. It's all about taking that first step. Join us on Ministry.com where we can show you all the amazing tools that can make your education a reality. Ministry.com is here and easily accessible. What do you have to lose except for the opportunity to improve your life for the better? Check out Ministry.com now. Hi, I'm Lindsay Clifford, editor of Just Jesus. As a young believer, I really wanted to learn how to grow close to God. A good friend shared invaluable wisdom. If you really want to grow, read the words of Jesus. On behalf of Ministry.com, I want to thank you for watching Education, A Higher Calling. I also want to thank Trinity Broadcasting Network for the opportunity to bring this program to our partners. To support continued airing of this program, please send your loved gift or pledge of $20 or more to Trinity Broadcasting Network, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. As a thank you, TBN will send you a copy of Just Jesus. Get to know your Savior. He is an amazing person. I'm Lindsay Clifford. Thank you again for watching and for your generous gift. God bless you.